We started this journey in 2019, and with Raph the Lich King Classic confirmed for 2022, it is time for another Class Retrospective series. During Vanilla, we asked, was it any good though? In TBC, we moved on to ask, is it any better now? And for Raph, well, it's no longer a question of asking if your class is good or not, because every spec in the game is great at something. So we're going to be looking at what is new to your class baseline, the PvE talent changes as well as raiding, how well your class is expected to perform in raiding throughout the expansion, PvP performance in the arena, as well as taking a look at your tier sets. And then through this, hopefully we can give a proper answer to your class in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Just how broken is it now? I always end up starting these series covering druids. Why is that, I wonder? Well, it's the only class in the game with four effective specs. They always have so many talking points and they continue to go from strength to strength as World of Warcraft progresses. During the Burning Crusade, I said that they were overall the most improved class coming from Classic. Moving into Wrath of the Lich King, they once again have had a lot of work into focusing each of their specs to be viable in their niche rather than having this jack of all trades and master of none class fantasy. In fact, I think the idea of that was well out of the picture even by late vanilla as the druids struggled to find their space anywhere apart from healing. TBC sure did improve on vanilla at least. Feral Tank became incredibly strong, Moonkin a utility powerhouse, Restoration a welcome addition, and Feral Cat was, um, yeah, well, I guess it exists if you want it to. Outside of tanks though, druids weren't really a class you ever stacked. Whilst viable for their buffs, their individual performance could often leave much to be desired. So in Wrath of the Lich King, will druids continue to be the unsung hero supporting from the back line, or is it their time to shine at the top? Let's find out. Obligatory YouTuber intermission. Start of the new series and all that. If you've been looking forward to this, can't wait to see your class, or just want to help out the channel in general, drop a like and a sub if you think that I deserve it. It's free and takes a few seconds, gets the videos out there, and hopefully the extra effort on the series will be worth it. Okay then, what is new baseline? None of the talent stuff, just the existing ability changes and new spells notepads out because there's gonna be a lot of it. The balance tree first. You know when you're standing on some kind of platform or ledge outside and you try and cast entangling roots and the game says what are you crazy? You can't cast this spell indoors. At least it creates some memes but in Wrath you can cast entangling roots indoors giving the druid a fairly reliable source of CC. Speaking of roots, nature's grasp is now baseline and has three charges instead of one. Bark skin gets some nice buffs moving from a 20% damage reduction in TPC to 30% and is now castable in all forms. Great change for actively tanking ferals, gaining another cooldown to use. Armor reduction effects such as that from Fairy Fire are now percentage and not a flat amount. This is an across the board change for all armor reduction effects in fact. A big one now, Balance gains access to a spammable AoE as Hurricane has had its cooldown removed. This is a change that when we talk about balance in more detail with talents, you'll see how they go from kind of meh AoE to you can really start to begin to top meters and delete entire packs as a boomy. Finally, for balance, Innovate is reworked. It goes from a 6 minute cooldown and basing its mana restored off the target spirit to a flat amount of mana equal to 225% of the druid's base mana pool and a 3 minute cooldown. So this means Wrath the Lich King Innovate will restore about 7,800 mana. It will have a shorter cooldown, but now any target that needs mana is a good target for an Innovate, which will of course not stop your arcane mages informing you that they need it on cooldown down every single fight. Feral combat tree next. So you know how in Cataclysm Feral Druids got Skull Bash as a proper interrupt? Well in Wrath of the Lich King they just kind of had a scuffed version of it added on to existing abilities. So now Bash and Maim will cause an interrupt effect on non-player spellcasting for 3 seconds. So if you really have to interrupt as a Druid, you can. It's a pain, but it is possible. Oh, and there's this visual update too for both cat and bear forms as well. Say hello to your brand new improved shapeshifts. And now in case you're wondering, there are no glyphs to not have to look at Boomkin form. That was Glyph of Stars, and it was also in Mists of Pandaria, and they didn't even update the Boomkin form properly until Legion either. So yeah, if you're playing a Boomy, you better like looking at it. 
they don't change tree form either. Energy is no longer gained in increments of 20, this will be true for Rogue as well, and will instead continuously regenerate at the same rate it was gained previously. Meaning that scenario that happens where you're like one or two energy off a finishing move doesn't mean you're going to have to wait for a full tick anymore. Nice. Mame is now also a stun and is basically the cat form equivalent of kidney shot, but it has a shorter duration and does some damage. Cats also now have an AoE, similar to what bears have been doing since vanilla, cats now learn to swipe, which does a large percentage of your weapon damage. Great AoE burst on low health adds. Not so good sustained, but better than nothing? Yes, totally. First new spell for druids is Savage Roar. This is the backbone of feral DPS and is a mandatory, you must have this up as close to 100% of the time as you possibly can, or your damage is just going to instantly disappear. It grants a massive 30% damage buff to physical attacks that can be 33% when glyphed, or up to 34 seconds. Needless to say, maintenance buff playstyle isn't for everybody, I know it's not for me, but we can look more at all the plates you have to spin as a feral DPS soon, and why people always rate it as one of the higher skill cap DPS specs. Tiger's Fury now has a cooldown, which is 30 seconds, but has had its energy cost removed, and will actually be useful for the first time ever, as we'll see when we get onto feral talents. As for the feral tanks, Savage Defense is a new passive, when you crit, you take less damage on next attack simple enough. Finally, Growl and all taunts in fact have a little rework. They are now a 30 yard range because much like real life, you do not have to be in melee distance to start talking shit. Yeah. Also, you can glyph taunts so they well, you know, work. Last four baseline changes are the tree enthusiasts over in Restoration, so we don't have a bunch to say here. There'll be two new spells. Nourish, which is like the druid small and efficient heal that they were missing from their toolkit. Heals more depending on how many hots or heal over times a target already has active. Basically replaces healing touch in all scenarios, so it's a very nice spell to pick up. And oh my god, how has it taken so long? Dungeon healers rejoice, and that one guy who survives a wipe in a raid and then just has to stand there and AFK because he can't do anything finally is useful because Blizzard are actually giving druids a proper resurrect in revive, and they still have combat res too. This is one of the best quality of life improvements they could have done. No, really. Look, combat res is cool and all, just not at the expense of having a normal one. That's all I'm going to say. So that's our general changes overview. Not a huge amount of new stuff in the baseline kit for the druids, but the the talent trees are where we will really see the difference. Let's start with balance again. Both druid DPS specs get way more interesting than they have been during TBC. First thing first, your rotation now is well, it's a rotation, not just press starfire till the enemy red bar has disappeared off your screen. In fact, this is an across the board change for spellcasters, which I think is super welcome because Boomy, like many other casters, have been pressing literally one button since Molten Core. So let's get the talent tree up and have a dig about and see what the new shiny and interesting bits are. First off, let's just cover the support parts in the restoration tree because each talent has had something added on to it. So it's interesting for a variety of playstyles. Yura, for example, gives 10% more intellect while in laser chicken form. Omen of Clarity is now passive and can proc off, well, anything that the druid does. A master shapeshifter is new and gives a bit of extra bang for your form of choice. Over in the balance tree, I actually want to start towards the bottom of it because this single talent defines your playstyle and understanding it will be key. Eclipse. Simply put, if you do not like how this talent works, you will not like Boomkin. Essentially, when you crit with either Wrath or Starfire, the opposite spell is empowered for 15 seconds and only one of these buffs can be up at once. Meaning, broadly speaking, you aren't just spamming Starfire 100% of the fight anymore and are tracking your Eclipse timers, whether it be a good time to proc them, your trinket procs, when to use Starfall, and more. Why you may not like this is because proccing your Eclipse states, which contribute a huge portion of your damage, both have RNG attached. If Heroism is up and your trinkets are rolling and you're fishing for a proc, that doesn't feel good. It's a small thing, but it's worth a mention. Let's move back up the tree then. Nature's Grace gets a huge buff, increasing all casting speed for three seconds instead of just next spell cast. Nature's Splendor is new, increasing the effect of both damaging and healing periodic effects. Nature's Reach gets some much needed threat reduction tacked onto the side of it, and Celestial Focus gets totally changed. It doesn't have that chance to stun anymore on Starfire, and now prevents spell pushback on a few abilities, as well as giving a bit of spell haste. You'll notice improved Insect Swarm 
isn't taken here. And when considering increases damage taken from Wrath by 3% or crit chance from Starfire by 3% with dots up, that is surprising. It's recommended in later game gearing, but boomies are just short on GCDs to apply this dot when they want to be blasting their active Eclipse more often than not. Improved Fairy Fire gets reworked and also now applies a spell hit debuff on the target and even more crit chance for the Boomkin. For real though, Boomkins do really make things go boom. Dream State isn't taken anymore, we don't use the word Oomkin anymore in Wrath the Lich King, partly thanks to another small rework to Moonkin form itself, offering more defences and getting rid of the highly questionable restore mana on melee attacks. What was that all about, TBC Moonkin form? Now spell crits, wow that makes more sense, can restore mana. Amazing. Improved Moonkin form adds to your impressive utility toolkit, giving 3% spell haste and spirit scaling for spell damage. Alkin Frenzy is a bit of a questionable one. You need to be getting hit to get value from it, and in raiding content, well as a DPS, you tend not to want to be getting hit. Some fights, however, you don't have a choice, like Saffron, for example, where it's going to be up all of the time. It's a substantial buff, but not a consistent one by any means. Gale Winds buffs up the power of your AoE spells mainly, very cool, and Typhoon is a brand new spell, which I'm pretty sure the main use of it is to prowl up to Lumber Mill in a Rathi Basin, knock people off the edge, and then laugh at them. Not taken here, but if I were me, I'd try and figure out where I can borrow a point to get this. Earth and Moon is just some extra stats and essentially makes it so your main spells apply a Curse of Elements type effect. And finally, the big one. The reason Boonkins kinda pop off in Wrath, one of the most iconic spells of all time, Starfall. Now, this is the OG Starfall. In more recent WoW expansions, Blizzard have made it, well, more, how can I put it? controllable. You press this bad boy in Wrath if it's in 36 yards of you, whether it's in combat or not, whether it's an enemy or a passive, it's getting starfalled. It does a lot of damage, it scales super hard with trinket procs, and man it's satisfying to have this ability up pretty much every second pull when you're raiding. Boomies bolster their playstyle of burst and sustain DPS with glyphs such as Starfire, Starfall, and Moonfire. Let's head on over to the Feral Tree then. First thing to consider is there are now more tailored talents between you being a cat or a bear than there was in TBC. More so the case for cat, but we'll get onto that in a moment because I want to start with bears. Similar to Moonkin, there's some support talents in the restoration tree, which I don't really have much to add on, apart from they make you do a bit more damage. In the feral tree, a new cooldown has been added called Last Stand. Uh, sorry, survival instincts, but no, it's... It is just last stand. Still, it's a nice extra cooldown for both cats and bears. Primal Precision is a huge 10 expertise for free, as well as energy cost reductions. You'll still want that expertise as a bear. It's a super valuable stat. Predatory Strikes also gain scaling off your equipped weapon. Natural Reaction is new and adds some more dodge chance for bears. And Survival of the Fittest also has a mini rework to give you the baseline stats you really need to be able to tank bosses. Infected Wounds is only really taken if no other classes, such as a Death Knight for example are in the party to provide the 20% attack speed reduction and Predator of the Pact is another huge pile of stats for bears including a 12% damage reduction just passively. King of the Jungle adds more damage on top of Enrage for Bears, and Improved Mangle is another new talent that reduces its cooldown, which is very important for tanking, as this will be a large chunk of your threat. Rendanter and Primal Gore give even more damage and make certain abilities be able to crit, though honestly, they are nice, it's a bigger deal for cats than it is for bears. At the bottom of the tree is the new active ability, Berserk. For your bear tanks, this will be a 3 minute cooldown, 15 second duration, and it will make Mangle hit 3 targets and have no cooldown. I don't know how you even think about pulling off a bear when they have this running. Obviously this is highly fight dependent, you kind of need to cleave or this end of talent tree ability is just doing, well, pretty much nothing if I'm honest. Immunity to fears though, but that's more of a PvP thing. Bears beef themselves up further with glyphs such as Growl, Frenzied Rejuvenation, Survival Instincts, and Maul. Again, it's content dependent. If I'm doing a dungeon as a bear tank, you bet I want a maul that cleaves. For raids though, maybe not so much. Kitty Cat next. We've covered a bunch of the talents, so let's go over the points we missed from a few important ones. 
Feral Charge can now be used in cat form and allows you to leap behind your target and daze them briefly. Predatory Strikes has a new effect added onto it that gives you 20% chance per combo point spent to make your next spell, which isn't revive essentially, instant cast. This is more of a PvP thing, but when combat res is called for, at least you can do it instantly, and the buff will always be active when you're playing in PvE. Improved the Leader of the Pack fixes Feral Mana issues, and King of the Jungle finally makes Tiger's fury actually useful as it transforms it into a mini cooldown that restores energy kind of like this or t used to be primal gore means some of your bleeds crit which is great because they ignore armor and berserk reduces energy cost by 50 percent for 15 seconds which is great burst at the start of the fight and for setting up your rotation at shoes glyphs like savage raw rip and shred and i suppose i should also mention it's not expected that you will power shift or will have to wear wolf's head helm anymore fiora doesn't give you energy when you shift into cat as it does in tbc it just kind of passively tracks your energy when not in cat form as if your energy bar is always going up whether you are in cat or not last set of pve talents for now and thankfully the restoration talenting is a bit more interesting than tbc which is just take every single one of your points and throw them into the restoration tree so resto druids are one of those classes that care about haste breakpoint values exciting this is a bit of a new thing for wrath the lich king mainly so you can get your gc D or global cooldown as low as possible to allow for maximum heal over time spamming. Again, I want this to be a bit of an overview, so I've gone with what I believe to be a more early game build, so we can just take a look at some of the newer talents. Over in balance, we get some nice additions like Genesis for 5% more periodic healing, Moonglow for better mana efficiency, Nature's Splendor for more hot duration, and Celestial Focus, which again is a consideration depending on your haste. Resto Druids have overall incredible mana efficiency throughout the the entirety of the expansion. Back in the restoration tree, Master Shapeshifter has been taken for more heals. Apart from that, a lot of this is the same as TBC, to be honest. Further down in the tree, Living Seed is new and makes it so critical heals do a bit more once the target next takes damage. You can take this if you don't need the extra points over in balance for spell haste. Tree of Life has had a bit of a rework. It doesn't slow you passively anymore. It used to by 20%. And you can cast a whole bunch more spells in tree form now, like Healing Touch. Yes, in TBC, you cannot cast Healing Touch in tree form. There will be no point where I believe this isn't just a huge oversight that was never fixed. Not that you really do cast Healing Touch outside of Nature Swiftness anymore, but it's just a principle. On top of that, Improved Tree of Life gives some more bonuses from Spirit. Revitalize gives some hots a chance to restore resources such as Runic Power, Rage, or Energy. This is actually quite nice and a unique selling point for Resto Druids. Kind of like the Tier 3 2 set, if you remember that, back from Original Nax. Gift of the Earth Mother is just a pile of stats goodness and Wild Growth is your final new talent, healing 5 nearby party members over 7 seconds, another solid addition to your ability to just cover the raid in heal over time effects. Resto Druids will use glyphs such as Swift Mend, which is such a nice quality of life improvement, Wild Growth, and the last one varies a little bit on your roll. You could pick one such as Nourish, Rejuvenation, or Innovate, for example. So, how do we think Druids are going to fare in Wrath of the Lich King then? Overall, this is a new section for these videos. I would usually cover leveling here, but uh, back in TBC, I barely made two sentences out of leveling. And in Wrath, just do what you want for it. Have some fun. It'll be fine. It's not challenging or super time consuming. Every class has better mana efficiency, personal cooldown, self sustain, and so on. It wouldn't be much of a talking point, especially when compared to how well we think the class is going to do on average. So it's always hard to say, and I do encourage a very large grain of salt here if you remember back at the start of tbc we all expected warriors to be pretty average until they started picking up armor pen during tier 6 in reality even at the start of tier 5 they were proving one of the top dps it's all well and good saying everyone was wrong with hindsight but that's what hindsight does and we don't have it right now there are servers who have tried wrath the lich king time and time again but at the end of the day we don't know until blizzard puts it on the servers with that said, I'd full on expect the majority of raids to consider taking one Feral DPS, one Moonkin, and one Restoration Druid. Feral tanks will at no point be as good as they currently have been in TBC at any point in Wrath of the Lich King. Yes, people will clear all the content with bears. Yes, they will work. But the other tanks, notably Prop Pal and Blood DK, just get kind of really, really overpowered. Feral single target threat isn't as good as their counterparts, and the AoE doesn't compare either. They are still some tanky boys and scale well but they lack 
external cooldowns. If you're dead set on continuing playing Feral, it's going to be possible, but I just think there'll be a bit less demand for them overall. Moonkin should absolutely pop off on clearing trash and fights with consistent adds coming in, especially when it lines up with their Starfall cooldown. But they do really need the stars to align, quite literally, to be seeing themselves anywhere near the top end of the DPS. Even then, I wouldn't expect to remain there for a prolonged period of time. I would say they'll be higher up in the DPS on average compared to where they've been in TBC, but they're not. I want to be the best DPS material. They're still highly desirable to have one as the buffs they provide are incredibly powerful. Also, they are way, way more fun to play and that certainly counts for something. I think Feral Cats are one of the specs which could be a surprise and come out on average much higher than expected and we already think that they will be good. They are in a strange place of doing well early game as their bleeds ignore armor whilst also scaling super well with armor penetration in later game raids. They're an absolute single target machine with strong burst AoE and the AoE is mega bursty and just not sustained whatsoever. The difference for cats will be on experience with the playstyle and knowledge of the fights. You need to know where the target swaps will be. When best to pop cooldowns? Will this mob live long enough for me to reapply dots? Each fight will have its own trial and error learning curve of how to optimize a feral druid's rotations, which will make it super interesting for some and frustrating for others. If you want a chill raid with a nice, simple playstyle, feral cat might not be for you. Finally, Restoration Druids. You'll want one, more or less. It's the same deal as TBC. They fill a niche, they bring great utility, you know what Druids do by now, the combat res, the innovate, and so on. No real bad words to say against Resto Druid. If you like it now, you'll like it in Wrath even more. However, much like TBC, it's not going to be that topping heels when compared to others. If that's what you want out of the game, you need to be thinking about Holy Pala. Again, these are speaking from experience, talking with others, and personal research on each specialization. We've had surprises in the past, we will be having them again, I'm sure, but those are my current impressions of Druid performance in PvE. So that's about enough on PvE, let's talk PvP and head over to the arena. If you're an avid TBC PvPer, I'm sure your impression of the Druid class at the moment looks something like about 95% of them are Restoration, 5% of them are Ferals, and Boonkins don't exist. This changes in Wrath quite a bit. Restoration goes from arguably the best healer in TBC to the least represented in Wrath, though it still fits in a number of extremely powerful comps. It's just not in every second game anymore. Feral Cat becomes considerably more threatening and gains a wide variety of tools to become more effective. And Boonkin, um, yeah not in the best spot still. So restoration, do they fall off? Do they just get terrible? What's the deal with that? I'll put it on two main reasons why the other healers have caught up. Everyone else just gets absolutely an insane volume of buffs, while in some ways restoration gets some of their utility and CC taken away from them. And number two, only having a poison and curse as defensive dispels and no offensive dispels is not a very good toolkit when it comes to Wrath the Lich King. Everyone has just kind of caught up to their level now. Here's a talent tree that a rest Restoration Druid may consider for the arena. There isn't a huge amount of changes compared to our PvE healing spec. Notable inclusions are Natural Perfection over in the Resto Tree, giving you both more offensive and defensive capability, and of course improved Bark Skin, which makes the Druid just have more baseline armor, additional damage reduction on Bark Skin, and it makes it harder to dispel. You can also Glyph Bark Skin on top of this to make it even better. Changes in the Feral Tree have made it much less attractive to dip into that for the likes of Brutal or impact or feral charge, both of which have now moved deeper into the tree, leading to part of the druid's PvP utility taking a hit. And as you will soon find out, early Wrath the Lich King is arguably more burst heavy than TBC was, which isn't great news when the majority of your heals really need time to take effect. Druids often pair up well with classes that cover their weaknesses or they can CC chain effectively with, with comps such as Resto Druid Shadow Priest Mage, aka God Comp, or Resto Druid Destro Warlock Elemental Shaman, aka LSD. In fact, they fit into many more caster comps than melee overall, and caster comps in Wrath are real scary. 
Speaking of casters, Boomkin. Surely it's in a better place in Wrath than Classic or TBC, right? Well, uh, it kind of just does the same thing that it's always done. If you let a Boomkin sit at the back and cast their spells, they're gonna delete your team, but it's just too easy to stop them from doing that. Except Wrath of the Lich King, Boomies will turbo delete your team. Between the bonus stats from Eclipse and Starfall, Boomies out of combat burst from stealth is really high. Practice teams, however, have too many options to shut it down through stuns and silences. And if you are under any effect that causes loss of your character, Starfall just gets turned off like a light switch, and then you're left jumping about applying not too scary dots and waiting for peels so you can play the game again. Talent-wise, there's barely any deviation from the PvE spec, apart from, of course, picking up Alkin Frenzy, and obviously, in this case, you always get Typhoon, because believe me, you are going to need the ability to kite as much as you can get. Also, Boomies don't do very well defensively. They get a nice chunk of physical mitigation from their form, but improved Bark Skin is all the way down at the bottom of the restoration tree, meaning for every other spec, it's just going to get dispelled more often than not, leaving you with travel form and running for your life. Is it a fun battle? ground spec yes can you boot people off the middle of eye of the storm you bet you can arena though yeah it's still gonna be a rough pick to get good value out of a quick mention for feral or bear it's not a thing in arena it just doesn't do enough damage and doesn't have the utility cat does cat however is the most improved druid arena spec by a lot so they are pretty rare in tbc at the moment and have a very narrow number of comps where they work a whole host of changes in wrath makes them considerably better. First up, Feral does very high damage and has practically infinite mobility, which they can really take full advantage of now that they've had mana issues solved through improved leader of the pack. They can choose a target and stick to it like nothing else. Here is an example talent tree. Additions such as Nurturing Instinct give a lot of bonus heals you do and you receive. Primal Tenacity is a solid two-part talent to reduce the duration of fears and a huge 30% damage reduction when stunned in Cat. Cat also now has a slow which they practically spam just by playing the game in infected wounds. King of the Jungle reduces the cost of shapeshifts by 60% in addition to the other effects it gives and every five combo points spent by the druids means they're going to be popping out of form and instantly cycloning somebody on the enemy team thanks to predatory strikes. This makes Feral Druid a high pressure, high damage choice that usually fits alongside another physical class that can provide a much needed mortal strike effect for their pressure to be effective such as Rogue or Hunter. Oh, and Berserk can both clear active fear effects and then makes you immune to them for 15 seconds. That is a lot of uptime on some classes that rely on those forms of CC. Overall, Feral gets a good look into a number of comps and should be seen a bunch more than it is in TBC. Which brings us on to tier sets. Something you'll notice about tier sets in general for Wrath the Lich King is that they start off kind of being a little bit dull, just adding a bit of damage to your regular rotation. And then in tier 8, they start getting a little bit interesting and then tier 9 somebody at blizzard went crazy with them and then in tier 10 they went mega crazy with tier set power levels nevertheless so let's take a look at the looks and the effects of the tier sets that the druid will be getting tier 7 the dream walker garb hey if we're gonna reuse the entirety of nax ramus again might as well reuse the tier sets again as well right you damn right we're gonna do that and they still look awesome all of them the druid's no exception set bonus wise feral first it of course has to work for both specializations here. I'd say Cat gets the better end of the bargain. Any extension on finishing moves helps smooth out that rotation, and more Tiger's Fury is only ever good. For restoration, a reduction on the cost of life bloom is okay, but druids aren't a class that are overly hurting for mana efficiency in the first place. Bonus nourish healing can add up and make them quite the spot healer, but this is often a role that other healers are doing in the first place. For balance, 5% damage on insect swarm is just pretty meh, to be honest. It's far from your best spell in the first place. 5% crit on Wrath and Starfire though is really, really good. Boomies already have a huge baseline crit chance through talents and benefit hugely from dealing critical strikes, making this seem like quite an attractive full set. Tier 8 from Ulduar, the Night Sun Garb. Best tier looks wise of the expansion, hands down, always been a big fan of this. Suits the druid theme really well. Both bonuses for Feral Cat seem kind of insane. Clear casting procking from your dots is like a dream scenario. It means more shreds, easier rotation, and just the chance to pop off. And the full set is 8 second more on Savage Raw, which is again fantastic. For bears, it feels once again it's just okay. With the 
nature of tanking and rage generation, you aren't as in need of clear casting procs, and an extra 8 seconds on survival instincts is probably just not seeing any value most of the time. The restoration tier 8 2 set is 10% more heals on swift mend, which isn't too exciting, it's a nice spot heal, but not usually something you're popping on cooldown. The 4 piece makes it so rejuvenation also does an instant heal when you apply it. I had a look into this and it appears to just be an additional tick of rejuve when you apply the spell, so in other words, not terribly exciting. Balance looks pretty good, so the 7% here appears to be added on top as a flat amount, I think. Who knows, the tooltip doesn't exactly give it away. Old wowhead comments don't say either. If it's 7% extra as a percentage though, this is a pretty tiny bonus. The 4 piece just says it has a chance. Great Blizz, I prefer to not know what my gear does. Another session of looking into it later, I believe it's an 8% proc chance with no internal cooldown, which is pretty good, actually, I would say. Tier 9 from Trial of the Crusader. These are the Rune Totem or Malfurion's Garb. So looks wise, I don't know if it's because they wanted to do two different sets between Horde or Alliance or what's going on here, but all of Tier 9, without exception, looks bad. It doesn't even look remotely good. What a downgrade from the Alduar set. The same, however, cannot be said for most of the tier set bonuses. Well, I say most of because the Feral set looks like a downgrade from Alduar. The two-piece reduces the cooldown on Growl, 5% more damage on Lacerate, and 3 extra seconds on Rake. Nothing too exciting here. Four set, hey, Cat can benefit from both here. That's quite nice. Shorter cooldown on Bark Skin, and 5% extra crit on Rip and Ferocious Bite, which say decent damage increase as your Rip will be crit baseline anyway thanks to a talent restoration five percent more crit on nourish which is okay more spot heals more living seeds going out and the four set makes it so rejuvenation can crit which could be quite interesting there's also a glyph called rapid rejuvenation that allows rejuvenation to benefit from haste too balance as per every set so far has great tier set bonuses by the looks of it the two set means moonfire's periodic damage can crit the vengeance talent in the balance tree also says it affects moonfire so this should be a nice bit of synergy the Four set, though a bit dull, is 4% flat damage on your big spells, which should be decent. The final stop is Ice Crown Citadel for tier 10, the Lesher Weave Garb. I don't know about the looks too much. I get it, it's meant to be a thorny looking undead plant thing going on. I just prefer the Alduar one. Bonuses then Feral First, 20% more damage on Swipe Burr and Lacerate. Okay, now these are some tier set bonuses. No more of that 5% nonsense. Cats, on the other hand, only get 10% less energy cost on Rip, which is pretty minor. The four piece makes Enrage into a damage reduction for Bear and removes the armor penalty, which is again very strong. And for Cats, it lets Rake crit, though both bleeds you're constantly keeping up are now critting, which sounds like a lot of fun. Restoration 2 set has a rather strangely worded Wild Growth heals more, and the four set gives Rejuvenation a chance to jump and reset its duration, which despite it only being a 2% chance, sounds really cool. It could proc more when glyphed, it can proc off itself. I bet this adds up over the duration of a long fight, where people are consistently taking damage. To round it out, as per usual, the balance set looks amazing. The two set is 15% more damage for 6 seconds after gaining clear casting. This should have great uptime, particularly during your burst when it should be just chain proccing off of Starfall. The four set makes it so when some of your spells crit, they add 7% of the damage as a damage over time effect. By ICC, you're going to be hitting some big boy crits as a boomy, so this should add up if it's worth taking. So with all that said, having talked PvP, expected performance, performance, PvE, the tier sets, and many points in between, can we give an answer to Druid in Wrath of the Lich King Classic? How broken is it now? It's better overall without a single doubt, but certainly on the lower end compared to what other classes bring to the table now. If you put Wrath of the Lich King Druid in TBC, it will look absolutely unreal insane, but that's testament to how much each class gets really powered up in the expansion. Feral Tank takes a bit of a downgrade when compared to TBC, Cat gets a massive boost in all areas of content, and Boomkin and Restoration fill that good utility niche whilst both gaining a much more engaging and fun playstyle. Druids continue to be that all around can do it all and can do it all well type of class now. So if you're somebody that enjoys a variety of playstyles and being able to fill the gap in your group, Druid might be a consideration for Wrath. That wraps it up for the first class in the series. I will try to do some polls later on so you guys can let me know what you'd like to see next as we have plenty of them to go. Let me know your thoughts on everything we've gone over today, whether you're planning on Druid and whether you played it back in the day. Thank you all so much for watching and listening in and i shall see you on the next one very soon